BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Interest rates are rising. If you have variable interest rate loans, such as an adjustable rate mortgage or a home equity line of credit, now might be a good time to lock into a good rate. If you have credit card debt, come up with a plan to get it paid off as soon as possible. Or see if you can get a better rate at another lender to speed up the repayment process. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. With Farmers, you could get savings just for becoming a customer. It's a little extra something. So to tell you about it, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Precious baby giggles. <laughs> when you switch to Farmers, you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. And that's a whole lot of something, baby. Aw, get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 K. Uh, what is it? K? It's K. Hello, K. 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 Take two. 99.9 KISW. Yay! That sounded good. It's your rock of Seattle. It's easy listening. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny just to do a whole show like that. It's and your the, rock of Seattle. The easy listening show. I used to do that way back in the day. It was one of the first jobs I ever had was for one of those like, you know, WLYT, The Light. <laughs> I always thought it would be funny to do like a SNL type skit where I mean obviously I'm not ready for SNL or anything. Oh, you're not, like pri- that. I, but they are ready for prime time. But you're not. But like, wouldn't it be great if like they had like a whole bit about a guy that's like you know your your easy listening DJ and he's like really like got the smooth sound the the, the nice pipes and then when the commercial when he hits a commercial he's a raging a hole to like his staff like just <laughs> scream because it's kind of like that's how rumor has it that's how some people are. Well, some people Rumor might has it. say Rumor that, has it. that when I used to shut my microphone off and the automation machine that ran everything wasn't working, mm-hmm. I sounded just like the guy you described. Wouldn't it be good? I mean, so funny. Like, You're listening to the smooth sounds of Seattle. We've got Kenny G and also Hall & Oates. We'll be right back. Vicky, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, so, like <laughs> screaming. Nice. <laughs> did, I ever, did I ever tell you the story? <laughs> What's the story? Oh, you're describing me 100%. Oh, and it a lovely wasn't a, it, DJ. Shocking. It wasn't an SNL bit. It happened, and I almost got fired for it. Because back, back in, this was got to be over 30, 35 years ago, there was mm-hmm. a giant computer that basically filled, it, it looked like one of those old card reading computers. Yes. And um, I was that guy. I was like, I do remember this. But this is a great story. W L Y T. But this thing, <laughs> this thing did everything for me, including turned on my microphone, Danny. I had no control over anything. It just said, okay, I know my song is ending, and I'm supposed to talk now. And I had to wait for the com- this giant computer machine to turn my mic on. So the song ends, and the giant computer machine is doing nothing. And I, you know, I there's no, I go out there. I don't know what buttons to push. The thing is literally like eight file cabinets long, and it is probably you know it, it's double the size of a regular file cabinet. So I'm pushing buttons. I see, and so I'm out in the other room, and then finally it turns my mic on. But I'm out there going, "You effing piece of s!" Oh. And so basically, it's like W light. We'll be right back. And it's like you know, <laughs> you know, sailing into the night. You effing piece of s. And I'm uh, uh, and uh, it was Sunday, and the people that were listening on the Lord's Day, (laughs) yeah, they were going to church listening to the show, and I just, I mean, oh, it was, it was not good. So uh, that was exactly my life. Is like I'll be right back, and then was trying to figure out how to get that thing to work. I remember I was working on like it it wasn't an easy listening station, but when I first started in radio, there was like a guy that was like he was like a news guy, and he had his own booth, kind of like how the Revs in his own booth, but like he was. He was the likable, like, nice guy on the air, like, in, in that whole world. And then one time he just had a meltdown when the microphones were off. 
And it was like early in my radio career. I look over, I'm like, hey, what's going on with him? He's like, oh, yeah, every couple of months this happens. Just he'll, he'll blow over. And he's throwing it at the time. They had these cart machines, which were like eight track things and, and the reel to reels. And everything's just flying in that room. And he's throwing it against the soundproof glass and screaming and yelling. And then he finally walks out. I'm like, you're okay? He's like, not now. And he just <laughs> leaves the room. I'm like, yeah, that's probably my bad for asking, are you okay? Clearly, you're not okay. You've just been throwing things in a room yeah. by yourself. Yeah. I don't know what happened and why he did that. But you know, you he, they were right. Every few months, he would have that meltdown. You can't do that anymore. Isn't that sad? It is I mean, unfortunate. I mean, that, that, that was, <laughs> Isn't that unfortunate? You can't freak out and throw things? Yeah, that was his way of controlling himself and now, you know, or dealing with the ridiculousness of life. And now, what he, now. What's he going to do now? They had those smash rooms. Yes. Yeah. yeah oh, go we make some here. Yo, go to the dump. I did that yesterday. <laughs> oh. first, first of all, I threw away over 600. I threw away 660 pounds of stuff, which I was Whoa. very disappointed. I couldn't find nine more pounds of that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. How great would that have been in my recent? The lady's like, oh, yep, it's 660. I'm like, please say nine, please say nine. 660 pounds. I'm like, damn. Oh. But man, dude, like, you back that, well, we, we rented out a van, and you just back that van up to the, 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 to the pile, and you just chuck everything. And mm-hmm. it feels so good. It's such a stress relief. Oh, nice. And, you, and you know, it's, 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 it seems ritualistic, like you're throwing your old life away, start, ready to start new. That's right. And when things smash, it feels. Amazing. Yeah. So it's kind of like one of those rooms that yeah. you're talking about, Danny. Oh, well, isn't that funny that that's what we have to have now, smash rooms, because we can't be smashing things in the room that we're in. I yes. think that's just unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> See, we I think we did it better in my day. What if the people up above us aren't actually doing construction and they're just a bunch of angry workers and they're always just throwing stuff? An entire, uh, uh, basically, skyscraper Whoa. floor filled with stuff you can break. Yep. Why they, wouldn't we know about it now? Yeah, because I'd be up there. Yeah, they need to invite us up there. Well, uh, so Danny, see, Danny, if we in the old days, you'd get to throw stuff around in this room. Sorry, buddy. Eh. I'm just saying. You know, no, it, no, no, it I would get be it. accepted. Nobody would think anything of it. Steve would ask you how you're doing. You'd say not now, not and then it'd be fine. You're like, not fun. now. Yeah. And duck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ah, those days. We miss those days. And you and I, you and I both know we've worked with people that are the throwers. Oh, man. Oh, on my, one of my first days on a job, I saw the, the host throw a producer or intern. Like, not just throw an actual item. They threw the intern. All right. Now, that's a step up. I have never seen that. <laughs> the person got to get out of my way and threw Woo! that person. Whoa. And then the commer- we go to commercials. like, so what do you think? I'm like, you'll never do that to me. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? I'm like. I am not okay with how you just handled that situation. I was like, if you do that, we're throwing fists. And he's just like, all right. And that was, that was our <laughs> well, first was conversation. Right. Probably assessed and said, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're, see, you're not the throwable type of guy. I, I, I hire different kinds of people. Like you can throw carts and D- CDs all you want, but you're not throwing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This uh, is the day one uh, conversation I had. I, I have. feel like that's reasonable. You know, there's a lot of things you got to put up with when you're in the entry level position, but I think being thrown around, you know, eh, you probably get to see it. Seems no out of fairness. Yeah. Right, yeah. We got a woman who led a cop, uh, actually led a bunch of cops on a high-speed chase. Why? Well, it's all because she had to poop. Steve will tell you all about it. He's got the mix report for you at 617 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's claim forgiveness means a claim won't increase your premium if you've been claim-free for five years. So your premium stays premium. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select like Farmers branded policy. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges are affiliate. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report. 
Well, thanks, you guys, and thanks to Mercedes Benz of Seattle for giving us the mix report. And today, it's time to pull out your uh, your putt putt putter because it's mini putt day. Oh, mini golf. Oh, nice. That's right. Enjoy your day of mini golf. I think the weather's gonna be decent enough where you could do that. It's like seventy degrees and sunny. Oh yeah. All right, let's do that. It's also International Day of Peace. Oh well, then don't go playing mini golf with me. So be nice to your Canadian friends. Oh, you're Canadian for just the Canadian friends? Well, anyone, but they're the closest, right? They're the closest friends you got? Friends right. from Mexico, oh. friends in Russia. Oh. Wherever it may be, just be nice to them. Oh, so you're covering everybody. It's an international day of peace. Uh, this lady in Oklahoma, though, she had a little bit of an issue with the police, mainly because of what was going inside of her stomach, it seems, because she's a 28-year-old woman by the name of Emily from Oklahoma, pulled over last week for not wearing a seatbelt. Okay. Well, then, she pulls out her ID, and the only form of ID that she had was her medical marijuana card. Oh, she's, uh, yeah. Well, the cops ran her name. They found out that she had a suspended license. Oh, boy. And she begged them to let her go for a couple of reasons. One, it was her birthday. Oh, nice. And number two, she told them, I got to poop. Oh, so let me go for number two, number two. Well, the cops also found out she had a warrant in another county for fighting a police officer. Oh, So they're like, yeah, we're going to have to arrest you. And that's when she sped off. And all of this is caught on camera, on the, on the cams. Uh, so here she is first talking to the cops and then speeding off and then them pulling over again. Your license is suspended. Why? I don't know. And now I'm waiting to see if you have warrants through Woods County. I and poop so bad. Where do you think I was going? Hey, man. <laughs> Because I know your license is suspended. I'm sorry, I didn't know it was. I won't drive no more, but can I please go home and get poop? You have warrants through Woods County and they're coming to get you. No, they're not. Ma'am. Get out of the vehicle now! Get out of poop in your car, ma'am. Yes, Whoa. at the end she did say, can I poop in your car? <laughs> I don't know if they said yes or no to that. I'm assuming that they said no to that. Can I poop in your car? Yes. Well, that's a question I didn't expect anybody. You know, you, just, you don't expect that one. I like, you have a suspended license. Why? I was like, I don't know. How do I know why? You're the one. You're the idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I got to poop so bad. He's like, where do you think I was going? Wow, That man. cop was great. Yeah. That's, uh, man, see, this is what they deal with. This, nope. is, this is what some people got to deal with. No word on whether that she was just trying to celebrate the nine Emmy wins for uh, that show, you know, uh, Poops Creek. Oh, Poops <laughs> Creek. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. to that show. Did that very well a, in their final season. That was pretty good. Yeah, was, actually. I mean, uh, I, you know what? I'm going to give you another one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Spent all morning working on that, BJ. No, not really. Yeah. yeah. Poops all Creek. Right. Let's talk about uh, the Seahawks game last night. Holy smokes. Yeah. What a game. I, I still haven't slept. No. I was like feeling good. I'm like, oh, they're up by 12. This game's going to end rather relaxing. No, it goes down to the wire. They're, down, they're, they're up by five. Cam Newton's on, what, like two seconds left in the game about to score. Yeah. I just thought, oh, this is going to be over. And, man, there's so many things to be impressed about that game. The big stop at the end, which led to the Seahawks winning the game on Sunday Night Football, 35-30 to against the Patriots. Russ Continuing to cook. Five touchdown passes to five different wide receivers. Yeah. Or, well, one's actually his running back as well. Uh, the battle between DK Metcalf and uh, Stephon Gilmore, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Or I think the vote goes to, for the most impressive part of the game, Bill Belichick's son and assistant coach Steve Belichick's mullet. Oh, yes, that yes. mullet's fantastic. That was the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah, the whole time I'm like, can you... Sh- Cut more to Steve. I want to see that mullet in it's all its glory. Oh yeah! Even with the mask on, it didn't didn't hinder the mullet. Yeah, he was, see now he he was all business in the front though. You know he was like, he had to take care of the game. So clearly, Bill Belichick is a good parent. Yeah, he oh, raised yeah. a good man with a good mullet. He raised Joe Dirt. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he totally did. All right, so like I mentioned, uh, the game ended right at the goal line. Uh, Seahawks up 35-30. Fortunately for the Seahawks, they did something they weren't able to do before, which is stop Cam Newton from just waltzing into the end zone. Uh, They only had time for one play, and here's how that play sounded. Here he goes. Cam is going to take it himself, and he doesn't get in. And the Seahawks are going to win the game. L.J. Collier and Leno Hill are the two guys who are there. Gotta love Lano Hill. Comes in the game as a substitute, is going to submarine here, take out the fullback, and take out Cam at the same time. No question about it. LJ Collier in on the mix as well. But they went to their strength. New England did, and they still could not make it happen. I mean, um, Cam didn't look great out there. Yeah. Had a very good game. Uh, I, I thought it was awesome during the press conference with Pete Carroll. He summed up what I think a lot of us were thinking. How insane would that game, the ending of that game, been if there were actual fans at CenturyLink Field? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Pete talking about it. 
For the fans out there, it was, we miss you so much. <laughs> I can't tell you. We're so used to this extraordinary following and crowd and, and energy and juice and all that. And so I don't know if you saw our guys, but our guys were trying to fill in for you. I, I just wish so much that you'd have been there for the last play of the game. I just think it would have been just so crazy. For, I hope you went nuts uh, and, and did what we were talking about doing and enjoyed the heck out of it. I know uh, Danny and I were texting, I can't handle this. I just, I'm, my heart is racing. And the hardest part about that was, you know, we went to bed because we put baby Tatum down, even though she she was like, I got the Seahawks got this. I can go to bed, guys. <laughs> yeah. And so we're lying in bed watching the game, but my wife fell asleep towards the end of the game. And it's like, man, she doesn't get enough sleep as it is because of the baby. So I'm trying my best to not be loud while in bed watching the end of this game. I'm shaking. And when they finally... You know, stop it. I have to, like, I let out, like, a little, like, dolphin squeak. I was like, eh! Because I was like, I can't, I didn't want to wake her up. But I was like, this is amazing. Oh, my gosh. And quickly texting Danny because I had nothing. I was like, I can yell through, through text, and that's about it. Yeah. I also said a lot of F words on that text on the last one. Uh, another person who agrees that it would have been awesome to the fans there was the guy that was a big part of that stop and then tell Jay Collier. Those are big time plays, man. You can't really just, like, the excitement, just with your boys, everything, just to finish it off, man. It's, it's a hell of a play, man. Imagine if we had fans here today. Seattle still be shaking. One person just texted saying I was watching the game on my phone in the grocery store at the end. My wife was pissed that I screamed at the end. <laughs> oh. Well, come How on. You not scream. You got to scream with that. And I'm a, I mean, I think all of us agree. Like, it's, man, what a trade to get Jamal Adams. I mean, at yeah. first it was like, okay, it's like, where has he been? And then all of a sudden, like, third quarter on he was just everywhere again yeah and i really enjoy his press conferences because he takes a lot of accountability for his performance sometimes says, i gotta work on this i gotta work on that but then shows lots of love for his teammates especially russell wilson we we had no doubt we was gonna win that game and uh for me you know as long as we got three we got a chance i'm gonna always say that he's, he's a bad boy after the first play you know russ throws it to geo geo you know gets a little tip he didn't catch it and it goes over his head for a pick six you talk about Poise, you talk about calmness, you talk about swagger, just just the energy was still there. Everybody came to the sideline and was like, don't sweat, don't panic. And that's what it's about, man. Like it's just it's just the fight and the want to with this team. We're gonna fight into the end. And I also love he took a little dig at the, his old team, the Jets, and says, I'm not used to beating the Patriots during the past <laughs> conference. You know, they were in the same division. Oh, that's funny. Conference. Yeah. Uh, speaking of our uh, crowd noise, because you heard it during the game, like they pumped in the crowd noise. You got I don't know who's working the crowd noise button over for the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> but he actually put like the or she uh, put crowd noise of boos while the game was going on. Like oh, when the team did not awesome. do well, they would boo their own team. That's Philly for you. Right? So there's no fans, and they're still putting booze in when things went bad. Here's a couple of uh, highlights during that game. Once down 41 to three in this game. Wentz off play action, looking for the end zone, and it's intercepted. Darius Williams with a diving pick in front of JJ Arthur Whiteside. That's awesome. Isn't that great? I love that. It's like the old like bubble hockey where you had the cheer or the boo button. Yeah. He's just hitting that boo button. Uh, the Seahawks up next for them. They're going to be taking on the Dallas Cowboys at CenturyLink Field. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys, huge comeback. I don't know if you're watching that game at all. They were down 29-10 to against the Atlanta Falcons. And the Falcons are known for choking. And they did it in an epic fashion. Ended up losing the game at the end with a field goal, 40-39. to Gave up this... I mean, the, the Dallas had this insane onside kick recovery where it was just like... This week of mini golf day, it was almost like a mini golf putt, and it just kind of rolled really slow, got over the point where it needed to be, and they picked up the ball. I've never seen one like that before. Yeah, that's the second one this season that I've seen. It was crazy. Yeah, it's just like, okay, what is this onside kick ma- magic that I'm seeing out there? Well, there's no magic with the Mariners, unfortunately. They lost oh. the Padres seven to four. Uh, they're now four games back from second place. They, they are taking on the Astros, who they're behind. So, got to sweep them to get close. Yeah, but uh, yeah. it's starting to get slim and slim yeah. and slim. Yep. Game two of the Stanley Cup Finals is tonight on NBC Sports Network. Uh, Dallas won game one, 4-1 to one against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Wow. So we'll see what happens with game number two tonight. As far as uh, weather, 72 degrees is going to be our high. Thanks to Kia of Puyallup for the mix report, and that's what's up. That's what's up. And thanks to the rain for making the, the sky clear again. Oh, that was, right? so, yeah, that was awesome. I had a couple of buddies like, are they going to have the Seahawks game at home? Like, in, 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 you know, in, with an open air? And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, it's a lot better now. 
Said some of my buddies on the East Coast were wondering how the hell is that game going to happen with all the smoke. That's because they get all the smoke now. That's right. Sorry about that, East Coast. So Seahawks, what two and zero now? Two and zero, and now I'm wondering. It used to be we'd be like, oh my gosh, it seems like Russell's always going to come back and, and 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 bring this team back, and that's our excitement. We're just you know chomping our nails, going, will we win the game if Russ can bring us back? Now it's like. Will the defense keep the other team from winning the game? Is that going to yep. be the way we just bite our nails all season long? Is that Russell does great and goes out and, you know, five touchdowns. You can't ask your quarterback to do more than throw five touchdowns. And still, you're like, are we going to win this game? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, is that what our season's going to be like? I mean, I got to imagine he's about to, like, get his second offensive player of the week again. I don't know how you don't give it to him. I mean, he looks incredible out there. Yeah. And, and that's even with the pick six. I mean, seriously. Oh, and that wasn't even his fault. No. And, and he, he didn't shove it into Greg Olson's face like he did in game one. Yeah. He, he marched right down the field again. Yeah. Right, right after that, too. That's it. Talk about, you know, as Jamal was saying, the poise and it's just the swagger he has. He throws a pick six. Well, he's back on the field again and he marches right down and gets a touchdown. So it's like, if you're the Jets, you're like, uh, I just looked at it and I go, I don't think it matters that we threw that pick six. And that's the only reason that game was as close as it was. What does the Jets the pick have to six. do with this? That's a, the Jets. Uh, yeah, that's the, Jamal's wondering. old team. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I mean the Patriots. Yeah, so the Patriots, you know, if you're the Patriots, you're like, okay, so we just started off the game the best way you'd want to start off the game. And it just doesn't even matter. You know, I mean, Russell Wilson's like, I don't care. And he just marches right down the field and... Frankly, that game shouldn't have been as close as it was. The pick six was the only reason that the, the Patriots were really going to be able to go toe with, toe-to-toe with Russell, in my opinion. Well, I mean, they made it to the end, though. That was, thankfully, I mean, I thought yeah. for sure the game was over. I honestly yeah. thought, I was like, okay. I mean, how do you, they, they haven't figured out how to stop Cam Newton yet when it comes oh, to yeah. those kind of plays. yeah. Oh, man, when he didn't get in, he flipped, and it wasn't even close. I, gosh, man, that was the best feeling. Yeah, that was fantastic. What a fun way to end the night. Well, you know, and it's it's it is a it, it it's it's really odd to just see us go out and just dominate at the beginning of a game. It's like whoa, uh, and now you know we it's the, now we know what other teams feel like when you know you got a quarterback that can do stuff, and Cam Newton's a quarterback that can do stuff. So here you are, you built up a lead, and then here's a Cam Newton guy that could come back and maybe do a comeback. Which is I'm like, oh, this is what it felt like for every other team playing the playing the Hawks, where you had Russell Wilson that you know in the second half, you know. Oh, they may stage a comeback. Well, here's my big question when you talk about Cam Newton. I mean, as you comic book guys go, yes. how'd you feel about him? I mean, I mean, he was crossing the streams. You know, he scored the touchdown. He did the Wakanda forever into the Superman open up the shirt. He's mixing Marvel and DC. <laughs> I don't think you can do that. I'm not, you're right. And I, I, I wasn't sure. The th- I felt, I thought it was Wakanda forever, but also Wonder Woman does that, too, when she's trying to block oh, It was absolutely Wakanda was forever. Wakanda? I, I yeah. want to put all the money in my pocket, which is only $10, but <laughs> I want to put Put all of it down that had nothing to do with Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt that well, he wasn't crossing streams. But he might be excited right. for the new Wonder Woman eighty four coming out for Christmas. I'm positive that's not the case. Yeah, but she that's her move too. <laughs> I don't know who did it first. I don't know if uh, Black Panther or Wonder Woman did the the crossing thing first. I'm not sure, but you're probably right, Steve. I'm just trying to you know give him the benefit because I don't believe in crossing streams either. Yeah, uh, you know what? So you got a, a Marvel or DC? Yeah, are you a Marvel money. guy? Or are you a DC guy? Yeah. Come on, figure it out. That's why they lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clearly. Yeah, I think you're right. On Friday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. What is the square root of 400? Pass. Okay. <laughs> hey, no. Oh. Yeah, I, I also got that wrong, too. So I can't even yell. Yeah. It's 20. I didn't think it was 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I didn't. So I can't even make fun of Steve for that one. You want a shot at Beatty Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. 
uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Uh, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.